Here, Evaluation Committee, which last May, you folks and Vikasa, my family, you know, who it. Today, I have the great honor to present my thesis, which title is, is Studies on a Team and Micro Symbiotic System, a Source of Compound with Biomedical Potential. This symbiotic system is composed by the actin and its cells. These um, are really famous because at the middle of the 70s, they were discovered to go out a basidal mosaic fungus as a principal source of the ants. This relationship between the fungus and the ants become in the general example of symbiosis between the actin ants, which belong to the tribe Atini in the Imenoptera group order, <coughs> and the Formaceae family. Then, at the end of the last century, two new microbes were discovered in this system, uh, actinomycic bacteria and apotogenic fungi. The actinomycic bacteria was really important because have activity to inhibit the, the recently described pathogen of the, of the garden. And finally, in 2007, a uh, black yeast was discovered in the system. This black yeast parasites the bacteria of the ants, and all of these microbes had a close relationship between all of them. This interaction between the ants and the fungi is beneficial for our organism, um, for the bacteria also. But in the case of the bacteria, it's directly antagonic to the pathogen. The arrow represents the direct interaction for a bold line and a dashed line for indirect interaction. The red color represents antagonistic interaction and the green color represents beneficial interaction between the ants. This system is so complex that over the years there are another virus, fake virus, bacteria, fungi, parasitoid insects, and also even snake in the system. It's so complex that we were just only focused in the antagonistic in interaction between the bacteria and the pathogenic escoboxis. Why this? Because this relationship has more than 40 million years ago, and there is no development or resistance. So this achieved us to quote our general hypothesis, that is, to understand at molecular level the chemical nature of the antagonistic interaction among antibiotic producing bacteria and the pathogenic food Escoboxis and besides exhort their potential for drug discovery. Our specific objective to accomplish this goal was to assess the diversity of cultivable bacteria associated to the fungus growing up. Specifically, we were working with Agrogirma echinator from Punta Chame in the coastal region of Panama. Then, we will assess the biological activity of these associated bacteria and their extract to a study all these microbial interactions, and also against human pathogens. Then we will be identifying the chemotypes that are related to each one of those bacteria. And then, to prove that we're, our hypothesis was correct, we will study in deep the microbial interaction between the bacteria and the pathogenic escoboxis. We will be using multi-imaging mass spectrometry to explore the spatial distribution of the of the bacteria against the fungi, taking a snapshot of the chemistry and getting the, the metabolite distribution. Then we will describe the metabolite involved in this interaction, and finally we will characterize those metabolites using traditional techniques like nuclear magnetic resonance and infrared spectroscopy. So let's start. In order to accomplish, we have to go to the field and try to collect the ants itself. We perform three different collections. We collect eight nests in Chiriqui, three nests in Punta Chame, and one nest in Panama. For the bacterial diversity, we will be focused only in Punta Chame nests because it was really difficult to, to summarize all the data from the different points. Mm -hmm. So for this point, we use three different cultural media that mimics the soil of the area. We use Kitin agar, Manitobal soil flora agar, and compact medium to the isolation. The results give us 355 different bacteria, morphotypes. 
then we randomly select 106 of these bacteria and perform in mass, multi mass spectrometry, imaging mass spectrometry, tandem mass spectrometry, and the sequencing. Then we perform or we cut off in the threshold, 93 bacteria pass the threshold of the quality of the sequence, representing 26% of the total bacteria of the collection. Um, 19 came from the album and bacteria, 37 from the garden bacteria, and 25% from the poopy bacteria. The result of the CPNS amplification of the DNA segment results in identification on three films. Actinobacteria, bacteroides, and proteobacteria, where paradobacteria were the most abundant bacteria. This result is quite similar to the previous data reported for the, the bacteria. However, we can perform direct comparison because the previous work were done mostly with metagenomic, and my work is based on culture dependent approach. In the families, we found several different families of actinomycetes bacteria, which are the more important bacteria because they are the pharmacy of the, of the forest. They produce the most important compound that have been produced in the traditionally. And they and then have been useful in the medical healthcare system of the human. So in the older part of the circle view of the phylogenetic tree, you can see where the bacteria were isolated from the garden, from the adult ant, or the poopy. Then, we, our results show that the garden and the poopy were quite similar, and the adult ant were just composed by bacteria and proteobacteria. For the case of the families, it was a little bit different, but equally, the only the difference the principle is in the Sandonomolae family, that was present only in the garden and in the adult ants, and not in the poopy. So, additionally, as you can see here, the streptomycid family is one of the most abundant families of bacteria in the poopy. So we think that the, the amount of streptomycid bacteria is increasing the poopy because this is a sessile organism that need to have an extra protection against pathogens. All of these bacteria were submitted to the gene bank and had a specific accession number for this study. Um, in addition, we also isolated three di four different strains of Escoboxis pathogens to be used in this strain, and we also perform uh, a live micrograph or each one in order to, to see the, the morphotype of the spores of the, of the, of the fungi. This allows us to, to identify that the, that the pathogen were Escoboxis gravity and not Escoboxis microsporum, which is the other pathogen that is also present in the, in the system. Then, to evaluate the activity, we use a panel of biocides, which include antifungal biocides against Escoboxis pathogen. We use two strains of isolated from the, the, same, the sameness where the bacteria were isolated, Candidalbicans. Tapilococcus aureus, Bacillus subtilis for antibacterial and the antiparasitic were Leishmania alemani and Plasmodium falciparum, which are the lethal form of this parasite. The result is shown in the older part of the phylogenetic tree. As you can see, the orange represents the antifungal size. Um, most of the bacteria were active against the pathogenic escoboxis which means that our, our community has a really a specificity against this pathogen of the next. We then have some bacteria that were active against antibacteria, and then just one bacteria was active against the antiparasitic, because the, the threshold for the activity of the bacteria was in the 70%, and we only have one bacteria that crossed the threshold of the activity. Uh, individually, you can see here the escoboxis, each one of the biocides that we tested, all our bacteria under extra. Um, it's clearly that the, the bacteria were most active against escoboxis. Basically, 60% of the bacteria that we isolated show activity against one, at least one of the biocides that we tested, um, mainly against the escoboxis pathogen. 
supporting the specificity of our bacterial community. This is the, the summary of the, of, the, of the bacteria that we have. And most of those bacteria show specific activity against coboxis. But the main, most important part of our work was try, trying to understand how this chemistry of this bacteria is involved to protect the, the, the nest of the ants. So we use tiny mass spectrometry, which is basically a technique that allows us to, to basically weigh. It's a, a balance to get the different molecules of the, uh, that are present in the bacteria. In this case, we basically have uh, two analyzers. This is the, the scheme of the traditional tiny mass spectrometry where two analyzers are used. The first one allows us to, to detect individual compounds. Then we fragmented this compound, I get basically a puzzle of each one of the molecules. As you can imagine, for a hundred different bacteria, there are thousands of spectra that could be generated. So we basically use two ionization techniques atmospheric pressure chemical ionization, ASE, and we use two extraction methods, methanol and ethylostate, in order to get a wide range of compounds. I get a clear picture of what is happening in the system. Then we isolated each one of the compounds using ultra-performance liquid chromatography for more or less 20 minutes per each one of the samples. So we were analyzing more than 400 different samples just to accomplish this part being generated need to be organized in order to, to get information that could be translated to the public. So our collaborator, Dr. Peter Thornston, in 2010, and with Dr. Nuno Bandeira, developed a new platform that is called Global Natural Product Social Model Planet Working. This is one of the most powerful techniques that will allow us to perform the cheminformatics associated to the, this spectra and allow us to organize, organize all the spectra that we have and also they replicate their identity against the database with more than 60,000 of compounds, the, the directly of the GMBS protocol and more than 2,000 of different compounds, 200,000 sorry, of different compounds from private database. So, the principle of molecular networking is really easy. You basically get the spectra, you align it, then you simplify it, and the correlation you, you graphite with a, a line. And the thickness of that line is the similarity. But let's see a little bit more in detail how this is performed. So we started with this bunch of different spectra. Then we simplify the spectra in, a, in the MATLAB algorithm and then we start doing comparison between each one of the spectra that we generated. Some compound will be very similar or it will be completely dissimilar. But if we included the chemical knowledge of the functional group, we know that the direct comparison is okay. But what happened if we directly compare this? Basically, we, we added to the algorithm information on all the functional groups and amino acids that are present in a common fragmentation pattern. So this allows us to perform common mass shift. For example, a water, a methanol, a methyl, a carbonyl group, and an aldehyde could be very similar. And the core chemistry is the same, just a small attachment is different. So as Prego told you, we basically then reorganize it we use the cosine similarity, then we simplify using circles because it's really difficult to work all with the spectra. The correlation, we put a line to correlate, we use a threshold to avoid those very dissimilar points. And then this is what it really looked like. More than 100 on 20,000 of different spectra was clustering in 70,000 of different spectra. Um, 2,050 compounds were eradicated. 
where most of the compounds were cell loop that is this part of, of the molecular network, which are actually very special compounds are they didn't match with other compounds, sometimes it's noise, sometimes are molecules that are just unique to a specific bacteria and they haven't any relationship with others. So we put all, all this soft loop because the the computer capability that we have here was at but, but that time that I uh, was analyzing data was a little bit lower, so I have to analyze in in, in second batch. But I included all the soft loop that were there replicated. Then we manually check each one of the of the compound and we refilter to a 300 different compounds that were there replicated. Then we manually annotated those compounds and we achieved uh, 23 compounds manually that represent these different molecular families that are representing here. For example, we had chemolones, prodigiosine, antibiotic, and biosoline, the polypeptide with spoline. We get the cytochrome, ferroxamines, and we get the indoles. Let's see in details those, some of those families. For example, the indole molecular family, we identify one of the compounds that is the indolacetic acid. This compound is very important in the system of the ants because the ants show one behavior that is called grooming. Basically, the ant use their leg um, and hook over the, the metapleural band and used to treat where the pathogen scopoxis is in the nest. So <clears throat> what we're finding is that the compound is not just in the exocrine line, it's also present in the bacteria associated to these ants. And we can track where the bacteria was isolated and which family belonged to those bacteria that produce the indolacetic acid. In this case, indolacetic acid belonged to the estrogomycin family, um, was isolated from, adult, from the garden bacteria. In the case of the other antibiotics that we find, for example, the proteocene molecular family show three, three different compounds, the sercruin and the proteocene, which is the, the open and the close. The, the closed ring. So in these antibiotics, they were discovered in the 60s and were all producing because they are have a wide spectrum of activities. Um, they have intestinal gas immunosuppressant, anti-cancer, and they are also associated with the with different bacteria, including pseudomonasia, microbiome, and also with the Comamonadacea bacteria. This is and where it's isolated from the ants and also from the garden. This is really important. So what we're thinking is that the ants are using this bacteria also to control the overgrowth of different of different bacteria or alien bacteria that do not have to be in the, in the system. The other compounds include the, this compound, this alpha ethyl benzenacetic acid. This compound shared the principal core on another compound from the exocrine gland of the of the fungus ruinans, which is the benzenacetic acid. It's also used to avoid the, the global color, the pathogen scoboxis. And then finally we have the lip lipopectide, which is used as in the literature as antiproliferative agent and had uh, antifungal and antibacterial activity. And then we have this huge amount of siderophores. These siderophores are traditional in molecular, the, in the codon sensor. Basically, these are the molecules that bacteria use to talk between them. So, and they also are active where an infection appears. So this is the resume of the compound that we isolated. We isolated in dull, prodigiosis, aromatic compounds, uh, lipope and lipopeptide, and cytophores. And this is the similarity with the, with the, with the spectrum the database, but we check it twice in manually to analyze each one of the fragmentation of those 23 compounds in order to prove it that they were there. So my final objective was to study the microbial interaction among the associated bacteria and the escoboxis pathogen. 
So we once again use mass spectrometry. In this case, we use another technique, which is multi imaging mass spectrometry. In this, we use uh, the sample. We analyze the sample using uh, a laser or neodymium yttrium and one specific wavelength uh, between 600 and 500 nanometers. Then we, are, we, once we ionize the compound, we analyze using a time of flight, ma time of flight mass spectrometer and then go to the Faraday detection. We specifically use a technique called agar multi imaging, where as a cool to plate of the, of the bow organism is transferred to the multi plate and then covered with the matrix and then is ionized with the laser, but with the specific that we ionize in the X and Y direction in order to get a snapshot of what is happening at a given time of the, of the interaction. So for my work, I, I will be showing you three different samples. I want to start with this one that's the most interesting that I had. This, the cystochromycin bacteria again, this coboxis, actually from the Cacimimic cetaceans. Um, in the first column, you see the bacteria uh, in single culture, then the, the pathogenic fungus in single culture, and then the chemical, the, the, the interaction between the fungi and the bacteria. And the last one column is the compound. As you can see here, the compound are being produced in the present and in the absence of the pathogen. So, we are thinking that the, the pathogen is not triggering any metabolite uh, pathway in, the, in this specific case. So, but specifically in this area, you see a little bit in the distribution, more on the size of the, of the pathogenic fungi. So we were targeting those compounds, trying to identify those compounds, which compound is, because here I only know how much is the weight of each one of the compounds. In order to do that, we perform against a molecular network, and then we specifically find those ions in this region where we derivate the compound, and we find it, a lifelink, a phonicin G, a phonicin A, manually annotation, and this was the only one that was present in the database. These are the, the, the specific chip that allow us, and we once now are trying to, to isolate this new compound that haven't been reported in the system. In order to prove the isolation the, that this compound was correct, we perform a MS spectrometry guided fractionation, and we started with a one gram of the, of the, raw, the raw extract of the bacteria, then we perform a solid phase fraction in rubber phase, and the Fraction D was were present the, the ions from the model. Then we submitted in uh, HPLC chromatography this this fraction, and we were able to isolate a compound that was pretty close to the to the multi target ions. So then we performed nuclear magnetic resonance in the mono dimensional um, in the carbon. Evaluation. So this is the delta comparison between the, the data table of the Alvetica Chimica Acta of, from the 81, where the, this compound was few reported. As you can see, just less than 0.4 difference were found. So this allows us to, this isolation allows us to perform a fractionation scan. It's really easy because this molecule is symmetrical, so it's just basically the loose of each one of the, of the sugar moieties. Um, the first loose one, and the second one is the loose of the two sugar moieties. What's really easy in the mass spec, it's worked really difficult at, uh, at the NMR because you only have the ability to show, to see half of the molecule because it's completely symmetrical. So we tested this bacteria, this compound, again, the panel of biocides, and we found a really nice activity, again, the swollen falsifying, the panosoma crucis, human breast cancer cell line, Staphylococcus aureus, Bacillus subtilis, and a mild activity against candida albicans. 
Sadly, this compound wasn't active again. The fungi that we were targeting, the neither scoboxis was produced. So this allows us to hypothesize once again that this compound is being used by the, by the ants to control the growth of the other bacteria in, this, in the nest. Um, basically allowing the, the ants to control which bacteria are going to be present in the nest of the ants and only useful to, the, to control the pathogens. So the next time we'll focus in this part that, that have the metaboli associated with the fungi and in the interaction. As you see a closer look, we were able to identify this alkaloid, the chiranine family of the alkaloid. This alkaloid is also being have a broad activity, but we were the first one in report the, the presence of this compound. Later, other other good or important research have shown that this kind of compound have neurotoxic activity against the ants itself. So this compound produced by the fungi is basically reducing the ability of the ants to behave in a properly way to control the pathogenic scoboxis. So it's a really interesting paper. So the difference between the, the, the paper that we published in scientific report was basically three month difference. And then they published a little bit more detail of this research in nature communication doing but still, we were the first one to report this kind of thing. Well, the another stromycer, CDR, CDR theory H, um, this bacteria, once again, show no induction where the presence of escoboxis is. But in this case, the distribution of the metabolite was a little bit reduced in the presence of the, of the pathogen. So we were targeting this specific metabolite that were kind of reduced because we were thinking that something, some chemistry could be happening over there. So we performed the molecular networking, and we were able to identify the actinomycin molecular family of compound that are these antibiotics, these macrolide antibiotics too. Um, we find that a new antibiotic reporting the system, the actinomycin exiobita, that is a, a new compound for this system. And the final, the last, the last compound, the last bacteria that we worked in did was the Streptomyces cd 28 and we were able to identify Cyderophorus and the M-formulated peptides. These are the molecules that we find, the ferroxamines and the desferoxamine compound, and the M-formulated peptide, CSCCO2138. So, this compound is quite interesting because uh, the M-formulated end of the peptide is not common because it, all the papers said, uh, tell that this M-formulated peptide is, occurs only when, when some en enzymatic pathway is not working in the proper way. So in summary, we described the rich diversity of secondary metabolite with antifungal activity produced by the bacteria associated to acromimate nature identifies 32 different compounds grouped in 21 molecular families covering eight different chemotypes, including proteocene, indoles, aromatic, cyrophores, lipopeptide, and lipophilins, sheranimin, and actinomycin compounds. The bacterial isolated shown a really nice activity against the escoboxis. But again, all these things that we tested, CD, CD, ACRO 44524, Tachinin Mesa Scoboxis Wery, Acromin Mercuno, and Scoboxis Wery, and of those, and also Candida albicans, 12 were acting against Bacillus subtilis, and 13 were acting against Staphylococcus aureus, and we only found one bacteria was acting against the Schweinia online. Finally, my more using mass spectrometry basic techniques like multi mass spectrometry and tandem mass spectrometry molecular networking reveal for the first time the metal light that are directly involved during the chemical interaction between the pathogenic scoboxis and the bacteria. And finally, I reported for the first time the actinomycin exirobita, a lifelink microlite, a, a iron-related cyderophorus 
formulate the peptide producing in those uh, aromatic families and sharing it out away. Those kind of compounds haven't been published in this system. So this is really important because it allows us to, to get new molecules and use to target this bacteria, trying to isolate the new compound. Because as you can see in the molecular network, there were huge amount of compounds that we were unable to identify. So the richness of the chemical diversity that is hiding in this uh, fungus going out symbiotic system is really awesome. So I just have to say thank you to my advisor, Marcelino and Dr. Hermogenes, um, Dr. Peter Rowenstein, all the master chemistry team, the people from the microbiology lab, the chemistry lab, the people from the ANS team, basically, the people in the Doris lab that train me to to perform all this technique in Panama because the, one of the important part of my work was that I have to do all the implementation of the technology in Panama because it doesn't exist. So I have to do the validation, develop in each one of the methods that I have to use it and apply. And was a, a really nice collaborative work with the people in the Dorenstein lab. And also thank you to my friend Rita and all the people in Vigasat that has been supporting me. Obviously, I have to say thank you Dr. Rao and the University of Charena Arguna for believing the information of the new doctor in Panama, research, all the people from Indigasa, ICPG, CNAC, Lawrence Lad, and Sonia that has been working in this wonderful project. Thank you. Uh, any question? Uh, I have one comment. First, uh, again, <clears throat> I want to say congratulations, Christopher, because you're saying the truth. Before you and, and Daniel, you know, uh, there was not much imaging or molecular networking in Panama, even in Latin America. And uh, I think our group and Dicas is like a pioneer in this kind of of study, so it is a, a good merit for you. You developed that here in Dicasa. And it's, it's a powerful tool that is being used for many people. Even some people from Colombia came to Panama to learn this with us in our laboratory. So this is a, a really good achievement. And also you have really nice results. I think uh, in the literature before we started working on this, there was like there were like 15 compounds, maybe only 15 compounds reported, and almost all the compounds we found are new for the system. So we are we are giving like a, a, a good contribution to the study of these ants. I think it is, it is you know result of hard work, and you know you see the achievement. So congratulations. Thank you. What is your future plan? Well, I want to do a lot of experience. I want to ask Pastor that I want to, to explore a little bit more the multi imaging spectrometry that we have. We have the, the, the well, the, the Brugger technology have uh, different lines, so we have the the better multi spectrometer. So it's also uh, uh, it's designed to do identification of proteins, and we are using just to basically scratch a little bit for the information that is hiding in the system. So I want to study a little bit more how to explode in a properly way with all the proteins, all the secondary metabolite that could be up there, and also. Uh, to study the plant pathogens, so I'm I'm, I'm pretty happy doing chemical ecology. So I want to to follow that line. I continue doing chemical ecology because my work is mostly chemical ecology. Um, aside with the drug discovery, because my PI is from drug discovery, but uh, I'm getting love with the chemical ecology. It's just very nice to study the, all the, the biodiversity that we have here. For example, we can study uh, plant trees. We also can study the other insects um, during 
this journey of the mass spectrometry, I've been collaborating with the several people. So uh, I didn't say, but uh, I, I was really proud to be part of the Nature Biotechnology publication. So the cluster in Panama, the mass spectrometry, is part where this tool was, was public. We were working on beta tester. I learned how to do this in common prod and then using the, the fancy uh, stuff in the web-based platform. But we are there. There are more than 100 different authors, and this specific paper had more than 600 of, of citation. And the group of Panama, Marcelino, Daniel, and me are there. So um, we published also seven papers, and we are waiting maybe three colorways or more that's coming on. In the, in the following years. So what more else you need uh, to upgrade the mass spectroscopy in case? We need a, 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 a little bit, a bigger, a bigger SE mass spectrometry because the, we have the fancy model. But you cannot upgrade one? No, the exactly no, because the, the time of flight of the, of the one, the, the equipment I write is quite short and the other one is bigger. So and get us a lot more resolution and the separation of the different molecules that are present. And for a metabolomic studies, for example, I'm trying to start to, to understand the, the lipid of a, a fruit, or you need a lot more resolution than equipment that do. So uh, that was a pet peeve actually when we were trying to develop in the metal because in San Diego they had the bigger equipment and we had the small one. So we have to, to change all the settings. All the settings were Top, are totally different in comparison to the one that they use because yeah, the equipment is pretty small. But, you know, <coughs> it's the only one in Latin America, as far as I can say. I think we have the first one in Latin America, then in Colombia installed the, another one. But the people in Colombia came to Panama to, to receive the training. Um, we're really proud of, of being part of these new technologies <coughs> in Panama. And I think that in Ida, in Ida they have they have they bought one, yeah. and um, so it would be good to to, to get information about that. That is a very new one. Um, Christopher, you are very elegant. <laughs> so I want to congratulate you and congratulate Dr. Marcelino Gutierrez, our coordinator. Uh, because um, you, you did a very good work. Uh, and um, during all these years, you have been struggling a lot, and, and you did it. You left your, everything you went to the US, spent time, and, and come back, but, but with a lot of, of knowledge, no? Yeah. And, and I fully, from the bottom of my heart, want to congratulate you because uh, you did a very nice work. Very good work, and I hope that know that you are my colleague. <laughs> you are our colleague. I hope, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, you, you can, you can uh, keep uh, working so hard and, and collaborating, uh, not only for your future, but for the future of science in our country. Congratulations. Thank you. On your ex excellent work, a nice presentation. This is a system uh, that scientists use to get information from, from the system and to learn on, on you know, use of antibiotics, for example. And based on the, on the work that you did, on the isolation of bacteria, the diversity of bacteria, the relative abundance of bacteria that you isolated, and the compounds that you found, is it possible to say something about um, the what is the most prevalent type of compounds or potential mechanisms of antimicrobial that are being used in this system? Or is it very diverse or any insight that you can provide on the system, I think, Where that the, you can share? Where? This kind of metabolomic study just scratched 2% of all the metabolites that were detected. So we're basically just detecting less than 2%. So 
it's going to be a mistake from my part if I want to say something because most of the common is still not over there. So, but what I can say is that the hypothesis that we have is that the ants are being using a cocktail of different compounds in order to avoid the development of the system and combine the pathogen in the system. It's the only thing that I can say. No specific which kind of compound are being involved because this is just 2% of all the compounds that, that may be present there. And also the technique that we use is the detection, have detection limits. So we are not getting all. We are improving to get most of of the information, but we are not allowed to get all the data that, that is over there. Thank you. More questions? Okay, thank you, Christopher. <laughs> so I have some snake for you, I have wine and